Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what are my favorite fields, subfields, syrups, whatever you want to call it. A very biased perspective, because, well, favorite. It's in the word, right? It's in the word, favorite. And um, today I would like to tell you about one of my favorite fields, what a surprise. Um, one of my, one of the biggest successes and failures at the same time in all of mathematics about quantum topology. So I will, I will comment on what I mean by failure and success as we go along. But, but of course, you should never say something is a failure. Well, unless it's a failure, I guess. Um, no, it's not really a failure, but it somehow um, is falling a little bit out of favor nowadays. And I will kind of comment on that. But it's still fantastic, but it's kind of fantastic for a different reason. And I will try to make this clear. Um, in this video. So what is quantum topology? Well, funnily, it's not neither about quantum nor about topology. Um, that's not quite true, but well, whatever. We'll see what it, what it means. It's kind of a little bit of a strange name, quantum topology. But anyway, the birth of quantum topology is roughly in 85, 1985. So roughly in 1985, with this one here, Vaughn Jones, um, discovering kind of one of fantastic discovery of what is called the Jones polynomial nowadays. And uh, a little bit later, like five years later, there was a Congress of Mathematics in Kyoto. And one of the field medalists was Vaughan Jones. So Vaughan Jones here very happily, apparently walks away with the Fields medal. Um, and I'm not sure why I say it's Kyoto 1991. It's Kyoto 1990, as it says here. Ignore the one. Anyway, so the quote here, uh, Jones got for what well, was well, the quote why Jones got the Fields Medal is Jones discovered an astonishing relationship between phenomenal algebras and geometric topology. And I really would like to highlight this this word here because this is essentially why we like quantum topology because of relationships, because of building bridges. And yeah, as a, as a side a side effect, as a side effect, we discovered this new polynomial, the Jones polynomial of links and whatever. There was a new field born, quantum topology. And what made this great, and why this is a, a kind of really nice example of, of a Fields medal, kind of one of these Fields medals where you think, hmm, I could have gotten that Fields medal because the Jones polynomial is really so easy, but of course that's just, it's just a mirage. I could have never gotten this Fields medal, but the Jones polynomial is like this fantastically brilliant idea. Uh, this, this calculation that you can do on the back of an envelope. It's really simple. People love it nowadays. It appears in undergraduate curriculum. Uh, most of the Fields medalists work cannot appear in any undergraduate curriculum, just to make that clear here, how fantastic uh, this discovery of Jones actually was. And it solved old conjectures and made new connections. And this is really um, why I personally feel like this is a really good example of what a Fields medal is supposed to be. Right? Not just solving old conjectures, you know, it's a bit boring. Yeah, Everyone knows that the Riemann hypothesis is true anyway, so why would you prove it? I'm just kidding. But it's somehow much better if you can solve an old conjecture and open a new field of mathematics, right? That's kind of much better. And even with a with like a really simple idea that people have missed for 80 years of not theory. It's kind of really, really exciting. I think this is a really fantastic example of a, of a Fields medal. Not of one, of one of the other Fields medal where they're just, at least in my personal opinion, they're so far out there, uh, there's no way I can reach it. This looks like I could reach it, but uh, really no chance at all. Jones is just still brilliant. Um, but the, the polynomial itself, the discovery itself is remarkably simple. And this is essentially why Jones got the Fields Medal. Not because it's super deep mathematics or whatever, but because it's remarkably simple and powerful at the same time. And I really like this. It's just one of these rare, rare stories. Way, way uh, much more unique than something like uh, I proved an old conjecture. It's kind, of, it's kind of really, really good. Okay, and what was this old conjecture? Well, there were plenty of old conjectures. But some of the one that is easiest to formulate is um, trefoil and mirror image. Mirror image is really just look at the crossings. It just swaps the crossings, yeah, all of them. And then you have the mirror image. And everyone knew, and there was a proof um, that, but it's kind of a slightly nasty proof. They have a tailor-made proof that doesn't generalize and it's technical at the same time. 
not very great. But anyway, so people were looking for a good way to, to, to say that these two are not the same. They're right? so not the same knots. It's um, actually very believable. It's, it's one of these statements is this kind of an easy statement. And then that proof is actually, the, all known proofs are kind of difficult. And people tried for uh, roughly 80 years to find a nice proof. And it all boils down to people who are trying to, I say it again, there was a proof, but it's somehow not a nice proof. Anyway, um, people are trying to find invariance of knots, which is something like if the knot changes, the knot projection changes, um, but you still get the same knot, then the, then the knot invariance stays the same. And people were looking for various of those knot invariants uh, coming from various different perspectives, combinatorics, knot theory, colorings, whatever, uh, sometimes numbers, polynomials. Um, and that's not so difficult. Finding a knot invariant is not difficult, but finding a good knot invariant, kind of, kind of a good balance between computable and powerful, is like really hard. Yeah? So most knot invariants are pretty bad in the sense that they're either way too naive and they, they distinguish anything essentially, or they're too difficult and you can't compute them anyway. So um, it's something in between was really missing and before Jones, there was, not, there was a, a list of knot invariants, quite a few of them actually, but not a single one could have, dis, could have solved this easy problem of distinguish the trefoil knot, the first non-trivial knot, and its mirror image. And this was kind of one of the old conjectures Jones solved. There were a lot of other conjectures, or this was not really a conjecture. As I said, there was a proof, let's say, uh, one of the problems Jones solved uh, there were many, many kind of similar problems in uh, low dimensional topology, which kind of Jones solved in one go by just defining this famous invariant uh, of a knot, which is a polynomial. It's not really a polynomial, it's a Laurent polynomial, but anyway, people call it a polynomial, which has an extremely easy uh, definition because it just fits here on this slide. It's this essentially, and that's it. Um, yeah, so that's about it. So you have. Whenever you look at the um, uh, diagram of, an, of a knot, you can have over or under crossings, one of them, and they're related by this relation. So they're the same up to kind of an error term. And uh, if you apply this relation recursively around every crossing, you can somehow compute this point. Um, that's just what it is. But essentially the definition, yeah, that's what I meant before. This is what one of those times very rare times where a very simple idea actually makes a big breakthrough um so this definition is not difficult sure i'm hiding a little bit but essentially it fits on one slide and the computation is like really really easy and there, there are many different things in particular um the the mirror image this guy here um so those two guys here the of, of a knot is always just obtained by the symmetry of sending this quantum parameter this is where quantum topology essentially comes in whatever quantum parameter to its inverse so as soon as you have something like like whatever uh, this polynomial here which is not invariant under this move the the uh, not is not the same as its mirror image it's not just a very easy proof of uh, the trefoil con let's let it be called the trefoil conjecture of the trefoil conjecture but it also works for many 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 other it's kind of really, really, um, really, really fantastic. So the Jones polynomial is powerful and easy at the same time, which is remarkable. So really, if you have never done the computation with the Jones polynomial, go to the Wikipedia page. It is explained very nicely. Or one of Jones's, uh, I think it's called the Jones polynomial for dummies, is linked in the description. Um, it's really easy to compute. You can do easy compu computations easily, or at least small computations easily. But it's kind of very powerful at the same time. Um, but what is really the key here, it kind of created a new field of mathematics, which is exactly quantum topology, which serves as a bridge between uh, various different fields of mathematics. It's kind of remarkable. So essentially what Jones did, so let's go back to the quote, and then I show you the theorem. Between von Neumann algebras and geometric topology, you know, the relationship between those two guys. Geometric topology was just not theory, just uh, whatever the polynomial. And for Neumann algebras was this theory of subfactors. So the Jones polynomial arises, and that's kind of the main point. Not just 
not just this is beautiful powerful simple and easy but no it's even better it arises kind of in many many different fields and therefore builds a bridge between them and the original one from jones was subfactors um they come up in the study of for neumann algebra which is really is functional analysis functional analysis looks very different from dot theory um Briefly afterwards, Jones realized that it comes from hacker algebras as well. And hacker algebras, oh, I should actually keep my color code. So this is supposed to be blue, I guess. So in hacker algebras are uh, really kind of essentially number theoretical gadgets originally. Nowadays, they appear mostly in our representation theory. And then via quantum groups, roughly around the same time. Um, and quantum groups come from statistical mechanics. From the so-called young baxter equation and then there are like a true gazillions of more ways to discover the jones polynomial which we discovered after jones which kind of makes this um this, this one reason why quantum topology the field kind of the study of the jones polynomial if you want or the study of the fields connecting the jones polynomial why it makes it so great because it, it just it's just a bridge builder it, it's just a really good bridge builder between uh, many many uh, different fields and I talked at the beginning about a failure. Well, the failure and the slightly the reason why uh, trinomial topology is slightly out of well, out of fashion at this at this stage, at least for topologists, is that it was never really used to solve kind of the big open problems. So uh, when this whole story began in the 1990s or 1980s, people got like really excited. Feels metal. Um, and people were thinking, oh, not theory, that's the same as three or four dimensional topology. So you can maybe even uh, solve one of the old conjectures, like the Poincare conjecture. And quantum topology never made it there. Um, and so the, most of the big open problems in geometric topology were not solved using quantum topology. So it was selling us a little bit short after a big, a big hype. Um, it kind of selling it a bit short and really what still remains at least for me is uh, the making the connection so it might not be the best problem solver out there but it's certainly pretty pretty bit good in building bridges which is extremely important in mathematics anyway so let me just wrap up by telling you about this last one uh the quantum groups because essentially it boils down to a diagrammatic description of the young baxter equation which came up somehow um actually with the, the roughly around the time when the young baxter equation was discovered it's a certain braid like equation that comes from statistical mechanics and you can as soon as you have this picture you can kind of believe that there's a not invariant going on um but people were discovering this in the 1970s beginning of the 1980s studying this and in order to find solutions for those equations it's kind of a set of equations that need that you want to find solutions for but it's not linear or not nice it's not nice it's very difficult to find solutions so people were thinking about methods to come up with solutions and discovered quantum groups um as a kind of a big toolbox to generate solutions to the young baxter equations and those quantum groups essentially well quantum group is kind of a strange thing it's neither quantum nor group um there's this famous what is a quantum group uh by um Trudfeld, which hopefully is linked in the description um but anyway essentially uh there are kind of like quantum objects of kind of quantizations of classical objects and essentially there are three types of solutions people discovered uh, for the young baxter equations so called rational trigonometric and elliptic and they all kind of correspond to slightly different um ways of defining a quantum group there's the yangian um and there's an elliptic quantum group and then there's the one that the, the, probably the most well-known one the Jin, uh, drinfeld jimbo type quantum group which then gives rise to the jones polynomial as well and not just to one jones polynomial but kind of to a, a vast family of jones polynomials if you want anyway again quantum topology is about building bridges and just my last slide was about an equation that came up in statistical mechanics, something that looks very different from not theory, gives you the Jones polynomial and all this theory um, of quantum groups, which is really the selling point of quantum topology. It's a bridge builder. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.